I once read a question on internet asking why there's no castle in China. We do have, and we have them in different styles. But they are usually in remote areas, so this person might have not heard about these areas and these castles. In today's video, I went to Longnan County in southern Jiangxi Province and will take you to visit four castles. They are called Hagawad Houses. Hello, I'm Yan Yan. I'm in Longnan, Jiangxi Province. Today, I'll tell you the story of a special group of Chinese, the Haga people. Behind me is a traditional house that Haga people live. It looks like a medieval fortress. Let's go inside and explore the story behind this architecture. From this angle, it does not look like a fortress at all, but I'll show you the turret later. Usually, the Hakka Wood House has two stories, but this one is very special. It's the tallest one. It has four stories. Different floors have different functions. Usually, one family took one room from each floor. The first floor was where the ancestral hall, the kitchen, the room for livestock were located. There used to be rooms in the middle of this ward house, but they were removed recently. The second and the third floor were bedrooms and the storage rooms. There's one and only ladder that leads to the fourth floor. The fourth floor was spell rooms prepared for warfare or conflict. This is the turret of Hakka Wood House. It's usually located in the corner of the house. There are several peepholes for residents to watch for the enemies. Let me take you for a walk on the fourth floor. There is no window on the wall, only peepholes and cranos. That's the case for the entire house. No window on the wall. The entire house is a castle. In designing of the house, safety took priority over comfort. In each room, there is only one small window and it's facing the courtyard. It's not airy in the room at all. 
There is only one staircase in the entire building for defensive purpose. Why do Hakka people live in houses like this? The answer lies in the background of this group. Hakka literally means guest family. Hakka people are Han Chinese who originated from northern China's Yellow River area. Most of them live in present-day southern Jiangxi, western Fujian, and northern Guangdong provinces. Their ancestors migrated to southern China to avoid the wars. From the 17th century onwards, population pressures drove them more and more into conflict with their neighbors. As rivalry for resources turned to armed warfare, the Hakka people began building communal living structures designed to be easily defensible. This Hakka Wood House is the largest one in southern Jiangxi province. The Chinese name for Wood House is Wei Wu. Look at the character Wei. It means enclosure. Hakka Wood House looks so similar to Chinese character Wei. They both have an enclosure. Another character has the same structure. Guo, country. The character Guo also has an enclosure because a country has borders. Hakka people migrated when their country was invaded or in wars. When borders of their country was breached, they had to migrate it and build ward house to protect themselves. In the corners, there are four turrets. It's one of the features of Hakka ward house. Let's take a look at the public area of this house. Communal life is the integral part for residents here. Although each family has their own section, they congregate in the courtyard and the family halls for ceremony activities such as weddings and the celebration of Chinese New Year. Since rooms in Hakka Wood houses are dark and not airy, courtyard is the only place to soak up sun and breathe fresh air. There is always a courtyard in Hakka Wood house big or small, and there is always a well in the courtyard. It's an important source of water, especially during the siege of the house. During peaceful time, women in the house would come out and gather in the courtyard, talking about gossips. Hakka Wood House is a combination of house, fortress, and ancestral hall. The ancestors of Hakka people were aristocrats or members of rich families from northern China. The migration of Han Chinese southward first started in the 4th century when many nomadic tribes invaded northern China and established various states. Aristocrats and rich Han Chinese families migrated south to Yangtze River Delta area. A Han Chinese royal dynasty was established in southern China with Nanjing as its capital. After years of wars and many short-lived states, northern China was unified by a nomadic people called Xianbei. Mulan's story happened in this state during this period. In late Tang Dynasty in the 9th century, uprisings and wars swept the Yangtze River Delta. The ancestor of Hakka people had to migrate again. This time, they moved further south to hilly areas in present-day southern Jiangxi province. In order to distinguish Hakka people from native people in the area, in the Song Dynasty, when the government conducted household register, they put Hakka people into guest category. That's where the name Hakka was from. People living in Hakka Wood House were from the same patrilineal clan. Hakka people took pride of their ancestors. Hardship during migration and living in a new environment made them more identified with and loyal to their clan. Therefore, the ancestral hall is the most important facility in Hakka Wood House. The entrance of the ancestral hall of this Hakka Wood House is in the courtyard.
The gates consist of six doors. Hakka people emphasize hierarchy and ancient attic. Even entering the gate should follow the rule. There's a special rule for the door here. Men should go from left hand side, and women should go from right hand side. Senior people in the clan or very important guests could enter from the doors in the center. After entering the gate, there are two rooms on both sides, which served as the places to meet guests. Further inside is the middle hall, the largest hall in the house. This hall is a public place for important ceremonial activities such as meetings, weddings, and the celebration of Chinese New Year. Because of its importance in Hakka people's life, the ancestral hall usually is the best decorated and largest room in the Hakka Wat House. On both sides of the hall, there is a very long bench. These are for the elderly people in the family to sit during the ceremonial activities. During Chinese New Year and special holidays, they would hand the photos of the ancestors of the clan in this hall for descendants to worship. Behind this door, there is another hall. It's the rear hall. This hall behind hall structure is very typical in traditional Chinese houses. There is no limitation of how many halls there should be. The more halls there are, the richer the family is. I've been to a traditional house with nine halls, one behind another. In this house, on both sides of the ancestral halls are living quarters. There are many water tanks like this in the water village. In case there is a fire, people can use the water to put out the fire. The outer section are also living quarters and they are behind a wall. There are two floors. Each family took one section on both floors and there is a door for each individual family. Unlike the kibbutz style communal life in Israel, each family in the Hagawad house is private. The southern side of the house is not living quarters. There are 19 rooms built along the southern wall of the Ward village. These rooms are used for storage of food, treasure, and other essential products for the village. From the number of the storage rooms, we could tell the clan living in this house was very rich. On the northern side, there is a stage and a space to watch performance. This is not a common thing in Hagawad houses. This house was built in 1798 in the Qin Dynasty. It was relatively new compared with other Hagawad houses in this region. I feel during this period, the environment was not as hostile as before for Hakka people and some Hakka people had accumulated considerable amount of fortune by this time. Their life turned from surviving to pleasure-seeking. Look at the window lattice. Very dedicated. The owner of this house had business and a lover in Suzhou, so some of the decoration in this house was of Yangtze River Delta style.
People living in a Hagawood house were usually descendants of the original owner of the house. Some of them might move out to build their own house. This was the case for this Hagawood house. The owner of the house was from the house next to it, which was smaller. When he started his own business and made money, he built this new house next to the old house of his clan. Next, I'm going to take you to Hagawood House built 200 years earlier than this one. This house was among the earliest ones in this region. It was built in 1582 during the Ming Dynasty. The Hakawood House is internally divided into different compartments for living quarters, ancestral hall, food storage, armory, and so on. On my right hand side is the living quarter, and on my left hand side is the ancestral hall. I'll take you go inside individually. Let's start from the gate. Hagawood houses usually have only one entrance. It's often near the turret, so it's easy to be monitored and defended. The gate is the most vulnerable point, and it is usually reinforced with stone and covered with iron. A number of smaller gates followed, in case the outer one was breached. From the entrance, I went directly to the ancestral hall. The front hall, the middle hall, and there is a rear hall. We've seen this structure in the previous house. The wooden ladder in the living quarter looked like it would break any time, so I didn't go upstairs. There is no courtyard in this house. The space between the living quarters and the ancestral halls act like the courtyard. And there is a well. This house looks very similar to the previous ones in general, but with one exception. The shape of this house is not a square. It's kind of round in the back, similar to the Tulo in Fujian province, which was also built by Hakka people and was featured in Disney's movie Mulan. This is the Ward House. This is inside the Tulo. This is the first Ward House we visit. I'm sure you get similarities and differences. Generally, Tulo in western Fujian province were built earlier than the ward houses in southern Jiangxi province. In history, some Hakka people moved to western Fujian province, and then in late Ming dynasty to early Qing dynasty, their descendants moved back. Studies show that 85% Hakka people in the three southernmost counties in Jiangxi province were the ones that moved back from western Fujian province. Since this house was built in late Ming Dynasty, it could be built by the ones who just moved back from western Fujian. They still preserve the Tulo style to some degree. But this theory is pure my guess. Tulo now is more famous and has made it to the list of UNESCO World Heritage Site. World houses in this region, however, are deteriorated and abandoned. This one just becomes the hide and seek place for kids. Lastly, let's go to another abandoned ward house. The turret, the courtyard, the well. The Ancestral Hall. We've seen this in previous houses, but there is something special in this house.
through the spider web in the window, we can see a lot of one. This what house was a wine club a few years ago. There was a restaurant and a bar inside. I've been here before, but I don't know what happened. Now it's totally abandoned. This is the sad thing about these Haga Wat houses. Lack of preservation and attention. I hope the high-speed railway going through this town that's supposed to be finished at the end of this year will change the situation. By that time, it will only take an hour and a half from Shenzhen to here. I hope the local government can see cultural value and business opportunities in these houses. I hope one day the houses can also make it to the UNESCO World Heritage List as Tulo did because they totally deserve it. And I hope one day you'll be able to visit these houses yourself. In my next video, I'll take you to Ganzhou, the city whose majority population are Haga people. It's the only city in China that has preserved the city walls from the Song Dynasty from 11th to 13th century. The Zhang River meets the Gong River here and becomes the Gang River that flows all the way to my hometown Nanchang. I'm Yan Yan. I make videos about places of interest in China and histories and stories behind them. This place has a really good acoustic effect. Listen. I'm Yan Yan. Subscribe to my channel. Yan Yan from China. Subscribe to my channel. I'll see you next time in Ganzhou.